Hey guys, welcome to Spoiler Alert with me, Sinifail Sanket. So in this episode, Matu Cody Lang, the special guest, uh, and I will be having a a spoiler-filled discussion on this film, which is called Mulan Rouge, which is directed, co-written, and produced by Baz Luhrmann. So uh, if you haven't watched Mulan Rouge, uh, please do check it out. Please do watch this film before and uh, and watch this uh, conversation, a spoiler-filled conversation uh, after watching the film. So hi Matt, welcome to Spoiler Alert uh, with Sanket. So uh, uh, today we are meeting uh, to discuss Mulan Rouge 2001. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. One of your favorite films. Love it. Yeah, so uh, just to say, like, uh, I'll uh, firstly uh, tell about uh, something about the film. It's about a uh, uh, writer played by Ivan McGregor who uh, shifts to uh, Paris uh, in the suburbs of Paris, I think. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he he meets uh, Nicole Kidman, Kidman's character in the Moulin Rouge uh, theater, and uh, they both uh, fall in love. And uh, circumstances and their story doesn't uh, like uh, happen uh, have a happy ending as such. Uh, but le- their love survives, I feel. So yeah, I, uh, like let me ask you first, uh, what was your experience watching this film? Well, for years I did not want to watch it because uh, you know how they d- redid the song Lady Marmalade with like Clara and whatnot, and I I thought that it was going to be like MTV presents cinema, and I was like. No thing. So for years I didn't watch it, and then I saw it on. I was flipping through channels, and I was like, you know what? I have no idea what the hell this is. So I was like, I'm just gonna see what it is, because all I knew was that damn remake of the song, which I thought was fun. But I was like, I don't want to watch the movie. So then I sat down and just like had it on in the background, and I actually started watching it and could not look away. And then I was like, well, now I need to watch it all the way through instead of with the commercial. So I watched it again. And then again, and again, and again, and again, it just became obsessed because I just thought it was super exciting. I hadn't seen anything so um, spastic and crazy as like, even like just musicals in general. And to see something almost like as if a, an animated film came to life and they shot it like with real people and uh, kind of this weird hybrid of animation and you know human beings in real life throwing all these like fantasy elements involved with it. Um, it had this heightened, crazy um, uh, like perspective on how to uh, make a movie musical. And I thought it was very unique. So it just kind of stuck with me um, immediately. So I've, I've loved it ever since, even though, you know, it is a very uh, a sad thing. And they tell you right at the beginning, they're like, oh, she's, she dies. And then you're like, uh, Okay, and you get distracted by all like the green fairy and they're drinking and having a good time. But then every now and again, you see her like, <clears throat> like coughing up blood and you're like, oh shit, yeah, she's about to die. So the whole time you're like, please don't, that's not going to happen. But it happened. <laughs> yeah. What about but, you? <laughs> uh, but actually, yeah, for, for me, actually, you were the one who told me to watch this film. Uh, so I watched this film in February and... Uh, Actually, <laughs> right from the beginning, like not even starting the film, I fell in love with the music. Uh, so this is, uh, I forgot the I, I forget the name of the music, but this music called ta 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 So I like yeah. fucking fell in love with this music because like I I have heard this music somewhere, but I don't know where. Uh, and then I figured it out that oh okay uh, this is kind of a music this kind of music I heard in uh, my younger days and uh, like I obviously can't remember the uh, the music and like that's where actually like I just fell in love with the film like started started to fell in love uh, with the film and even like obviously uh, like the uh, the director uh, Baz Luhrmann is actually giving you an insight about a fantasy. Uh, uh, like 
uh, and uh, this film is like our, any other fantasy i would say uh, like the those set pieces those uh, costumes and uh, those lightings were just like awesome and like uh, the, uh, even the story uh, like uh, what happened for me was like at one point uh, the, the story uh, obviously it mattered but uh, the like the, the main focus for me uh, got was uh, uh, was the costumes and all those production designs and those songs like uh, i like uh, for me instantly the songs were not uh, uh, the, uh, the songs were not uh, that remembering like th- that uh, impactful uh, just like uh, chicago did but uh, the the film grew into me uh, and uh, like even uh, like then i got to listen uh, uh, diamonds are uh, the girl's best friend so uh, i uh, like i uh, later liked uh, that song uh, and it, it grew into me so i actually uh, like uh, uh, yeah loved those songs later so what about you like uh, how the songs uh, impacted uh, in you uh, like in you well most of the songs i had already known because they're uh, pretty famous like pop songs pretty much like or like rock songs throughout the year like Um, there's that elephant love medley uh, moment where they're on top of like the big elephant where she has her room and they it's kind of like a mashup of all these different songs just to like express their love through music and um Even song uh, sound of music oh yeah yes yeah. <laughs> they have a um wait which wait which uh which one uh so when uh, i think yeah uh, i think even mcgregor and nicole kidman meet uh, like um, they meet for the first time in that room and uh, he sings uh, aloud that uh, the hills are alive and the sound of music yeah, he's yeah. Uh, like i was like i think you're thinking of dancer in the dark and then i was like oh no there's that whole moment it was like oh, yeah, nah, nah, nah. and like his voice i love i love you and mcgregor's voice which i was like I sometimes when you get like an actor who's not known for singing usually it's kind of like Ugh! but uh it sounded wonderful and then you have Nicole Kidman who you know it's it fits what she needs to do it has that like fluttery very airy kind of ah, Nicole Kidman thing that she does but it sounds great um for this film and even when she's like trying to like belt or whatever where she's like Fuck it, everything! it's still like just you can see her like trying and pushing and it's a thing that's really um great to see her do because i hadn't really seen her be so wacky and strange at times and it was just amazing to see her completely break out of a more uh i guess i was used to seeing her kind of more timid or like strong and put together and this was like and just to see her goof around was thrilling for me and uh even you and mcgregor too just being uh a total goofball even though he's shown his kind of um range i believe even even before that stuff with uh velvet gold mine which i think was before that and like train spotting um so it was really cool to see the cast all be so outrageous and even richard roxburgh who plays the duke the evil character and how like weird he is where he has like that twirly little mustache and i love him in this movie and i love that he and um uh all oh, the man who plays Harold Zidler um Jim Broadbent where the two of them come Jim together Broadbent, yeah they sing like a virgin which is so absurd um and it happens at such a strange point in the movie where all this dramatic stuff is happening but then they come together with this like goofy rendition of like a virgin which is so absurd um and i just love how playful the movie can be even when it's like being you know it has its darker moments especially at the end where i actually kind of like dancer in the dark i like to stop it at the second to last song so i don't get the ending where she you know doesn't make it it's that last like come what may moment and the curtain closes and i'm like well that's where the movie is i don't want to see the rest of it because i know the bad stuff happens but you know uh it's it's still i don't know, i just think it's absolutely wonderful and it's been um a big uh part of my life for years and i can see people being put off by it because it's so in your face crazy the editing is insane um but it is um visually um arresting in a way <laughs> where you're just like ah there's so much happening um but i think that's what makes it so exciting all, from beginning to end it's like you can't look away because you're like what the hell are they going to do next um so yeah that's been a um a big thing in my life for so long <laughs> 
But even uh, like also I like after watching this film, I read about uh, this film uh, on certain pages and uh, found out that uh, Baz Luhrmann, who is the co-writer of the film, he actually uh, like he came to India to he came to Mumbai uh, and watched uh, a Bollywood movie. and he was su- surprised that how people are reacting uh, like how people are watching a movie it it was a 3 hour uh, 25 a 3 hour 30 minute film where uh, there are every elements happening like it's uh, sad it's romantic it's ha- uh, it's comedy and they all have songs and like how people were enjoying those songs and uh, like that's that actually was the main reason and uh, that was the like a kind of a inspiration for Baz Luhrmann to make uh, this kind of a a bollywood uh, film where there are every elements of it like uh, there's a comedy there's a romance oh, and also there's a tragedy over here too uh, and uh, that's the ring but actually i feel uh, the, uh, like the, there's a difference between bollywood and there's a dis- difference between moulin rouge uh, i feel because uh moulin rouge is a tragedy like uh nothing uh good happened in the end of moulin rouge like uh that's the thing and like bollywood movies are i think they are so obsessed with having an a happy ending uh so that's actually felt great for me uh that's the thing yeah. yeah i thought it was i thought it was a very interesting choice to end on such a um resting note because it's like this movie's so big and fun and that you know, like and then she died and my life sucks now da 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 it's like uh okay i guess we're leaving off that so yeah it is very interesting and i like how they had kind of like a sort of like bollywood number towards the end where they're you know like the show inside the show they're doing the um like it takes place in india and stuff and they have like little elements of that in there too so like you could tell that he was inspired by certain things so that was uh, very interesting to see <laughs> very interesting to see uh, indian instruments to uh, in the films like uh, i think uh, like uh, by including this uh, bas lorman uh, actually paid tribute to uh, the uh, like the movie we go was in india and also the movies in india in bollywood too so that's actually was uh, like a pretty great film uh, like for as an indian watching this film and obviously watching this film uh, after 20 years uh, after its release so it was actually uh, a pretty great actually yeah but uh, actually uh, but uh, like uh, i wanted to ask you that how did you, this movie uh, impacted like uh, uh why are you uh, like watching this film till now repeatedly like i, I think how many times have you watched it oh i couldn't tell you i i literally i will put it on just like if i'm bored i have i like i bought like the i have like the blu-ray of it i've already had like several copies of it in the past but i've lost it i have it on like my amazon account just because i wanted to have access to it at any moment and you know when i'm bored i'm just like well i'll just put on this and i could rewatch the tango uh like de roxen uh moment over and over again. I think it's one of my just like favorite moments in cinema period <laughs> and that's like saying a lot because like usually my favorite directors are like Andrei Tarkovsky, like Kira Stami, uh Hong Sang-soo and then I'm like but the fucking tango scene in Moulin Rouge is amazing and I love how it's edited. I love the like intense passion and it's just it's just kind of like being sh- like shake like sh- um shook in like a weird way and um that whole moment i always get so captured into it um every time i see it because i i just think it's fantastic and carolyn o'connor who plays the nini legs in the air who's the woman who's like being tossed around by all the dancers and you see like the dance happening as well as the scene between like nicole kidman and richard roxburgh where he's basically trying to rape her and it's um this powerful intense scene but luckily she gets saved by the end of the end of the number and i just think that whole that whole scene just kind of shows you like this is there's fun moments but even within the music there can be very dark things happening within the story and i just i think it's powerful so i just had to mention it because that is my favorite scene in the entire movie <laughs> it happens it happens uh, like just like uh, uh, you have your own mulan rouge we indians have our own oh, mulan rouge but we have lagan and hera fairy like uh, all those films uh, these are actually hindi language films uh, we can like uh, 
like even we are when we are bored we can like just watch this film and we will enjoy uh, all those films obviously uh, and that's actually great about like everyone has their own moulin rouge and uh, like uh, like i'm actually uh, like after watching this film uh, i'm just like uh, oh, it's great that moulin rouge is your uh, th- like those kind of film uh, that like you can watch it anytime you want yeah <laughs> That's what, do you have like a favorite part from it like that you that like stuck out in your head that you just were like oh this is great so uh, the first dance number actually uh, yeah it, it was uh, nicole kidman's uh, dance where like uh, i think uh, yeah da- diamonds are the uh, girl's yeah. best friend it was like her entry was just unlike any other yeah. and it was just great like how she made an entrance uh, uh, like I, I, i just loved her and uh, and the following scene after that like uh, when even mcgregor and uh, nicole kidman meet for the first time uh, like uh, uh, he sings uh, and the hills are alive uh, and the sound of music like it was just incredible i couldn't forget it till now so that, that actually was a very great scene for me <laughs> I'm so glad you watched it and you enjoyed it. <laughs> That's really great. Yeah. <laughs> But so Matt uh, uh like after in this conversation uh, and like uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to uh, this channel and uh, talking about your favorite film uh, Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I love doing this. So I'll do it anytime. And also like uh like uh, for the viewers please subscribe to my channel and even uh, follow me on podcast amazon music apple music app, apple podcast actually uh, and other streaming uh, uh, like podcast streaming service also i'm also there on uh, like that so uh, do subscribe and follow on those channels so uh, so max see you in the next video hope yes please see you soon <laughs>